All right, everyone, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about a comparison between the internal rate of return and return on investment in commercial real estate. Let's get started. So this agenda is going to be short and sweet. We're really just going to compare these two return metrics. We're going to talk about pros and cons. We're going to talk about differences in calculation or application. And, and I think it's going to become, at the end of the day, really just a side-by-side -side comparison. So you can see maybe why it could be more effective to use one or the other in different circumstances. So just to make sure that we're all on the same page, we're talking about internal rate of return and return on investment. And I've taken some time to identify the four key maybe points of difference or similarity between these two metrics. So I think first it's probably best to think about them in terms of how they account for time. Now, both of these are cumulative return measures. So they'll take a look at everything from the first dollar you invested through the last dollar you received. So maybe when I first purchase the property all the way through when I sell the property. So they are both cumulative measures. But how they account for time, how they wait time is going to be very different. Now, I think an important distinction here is also going to be how they define total investment. So in IRR, it has to, that's the way that the calculation of the math works. In ROI, unfortunately, it depends. And so we'll explore that. Thankfully, both do account for leverage. So they are levered cash flows or they, they do account for the application of borrowing and debt. So let's dive into each one of these individually so we can see how they compare and contrast. Where I think we'll spend most of our time, however, is talking about these top two because obviously that's how they're different. So for some basics, the math I think is important, believe it or not. So try to stick with me here for a minute if some of these Greek symbols feels a little uncomfortable. So internal rate of return is really at its core the discount rate, that R right there, the discount rate that makes the left-hand side, net present value, equal to zero effectively. So the sum of all the discounted cash flows from time period zero through time period N. Now, that distinction is important because we are talking about discounting. We're talking about the effect that time has on e e the receipt or the payment of each one of these cash flows. Return on investment, on the other hand, doesn't include any of that compounding or discounting. This just simply says, let's take all cash flows, add them, and then divide them by what I invested. Now, it is that last asterisk, the definition of investment, where this gets a little more complicated. So if we were to set this up in Excel so you don't have to worry about either longhand math or understanding the formula itself to a degree, and quick sidebar, I'm not a big proponent of not understanding the formula, but for the sake of the video, I think we can stick to Excel. Then we'll say IRR open parentheses and select all the cash flows. Now return on investment is a little different where we'll just say add all cash flows and divide it by that initial investment. Now some folks will define investment differently. Some will say only the initial investment. Others will say all cumulative investments. So any time you needed to contribute dollars or spend money then that may also be considered investment. Depending on whether it's a conservative or aggressive definition of investment, that will obviously change the denominator and therefore how ROI is ultimately calculated. So before I digress too much further, I think it's important to kind of take apart each one of these piece by piece. So let's talk about how IRR accounts for time and ROI doesn't. So here we have three different investments, A, B, and C. Each one of them have a different horizon, a two-year, a four-year, and a six-year. Now, if you take a look at the IRR column, you'll notice that investment A, B, and C have different IRRs. So even though the investment was the same, a million bucks, 
And even though the actual amount collected, $2 million, is the same for each one of these investments, the IRR is different because the time it took for you to collect the $2 million is different. If I can collect $2 million, double my investment, if I can collect that earlier, my IRR is higher than if I had to wait longer. So you'll notice that IRR is different for each one of these investments, but ROI isn't. Because again, keep in mind, return on investment, all it does is add all cash flows and divide it by the investment. It doesn't care when those cash flows are collected. It just cares of the nominal amount. IRR, however, accounts for the time. Now, another way to think about this is how does it account for investment? And in particular, the definition of what investment really means. So here, let's take a look at another example. Let's say you invest $500,000, but then a couple years later, you have to spend a little more money. ROI, depending on who you ask, unfortunately, ROI, return on investment, may not include the additional $250,000 in the denominator, in the definition of investment. IRR will. IRR includes all cash flows regardless of sign. So in this case, the 23% that I calculated is really going to point out that difference. So if investment is equal to all contributions, then ROI is going to account for all the ins and outs. But in that case, it's not really 23%. 23% is relative only to the $500,000 initial contribution. But if you combine all contributions, the initial five and the additional 250 in year two, you've really invested 750 and your ROI is lower. So this isn't to say that ROI is better or worse or more accurate or not than IRR. It's just measuring different things. So I think my recommendation is just have a clear understanding of what it is that you're trying to measure. And then at that point, you can decide how you want to apply the calculation and how you want to interpret and use it. Now, I think from here, let's just finish off the table, even though both of them are the same. So both IRR and return on investment account for all cash flows, not just one periods. So like year one or year two is a periodic cash flow. Cumulative is all cash flows over the horizon. So think of this as like a snapshot on the right hand side. That's one year, but all cash flows, think of that as like a movie or a video. That's going to account for all time. Now, what about leverage? What about borrowing? So again, both do account for all cash flows, not just the unlevered cash flows. So if we were to take a look at like a snapshot pro forma, it wouldn't stop at NOI for one and bottom line before tax cash flow for the other. Both of them do. And so I think from that perspective, they are comprehensive return metrics. They take a look at the cumulative amount of invested capital, hopefully, and capital collected from the cash flow level, not the income level. So just to recap, IRR does account for time. So dollars collected earlier are given higher weight. And so IRR tends to be a bit higher. We should be careful with how we define investment when we think about return on investment. So what goes into that, into that denominator is going to be important for you. Is it cumulative dollars invested or just the initial? Now, the next two points of comparison, they're both the similar or the same. They both account for all cash flows through time, or at least should. And they also both account for leverage, the application of debt or borrowing. So just to recap, 
I think whenever we take a look at different kinds of return metrics, it's important to understand, obviously, their definition, obviously how they're calculated. But I think as we compare and contrast them, we can start to get a bit smarter about which ones to apply in different circumstances or based on different strategies or priorities. So I hope that this comparison helps clear up some of the differences, pros or cons between IRR and ROI. Thanks again. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.